Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having beef and vegetables. All right, let's talk about using a heavy barbell movement and following it up with a dumbbell movement for more gains. And this is something I like to do with clients a lot. It's something you guys have seen me start doing more. Right, I've started doing more of now that I got a full dumbbell set here. But it's something I prescribe for clients for a while, and there's a reason, reason I really like it. And it's because it allows for more complete development of a muscle. Uh, something I've said a lot is that the best thing that we can do for a muscle, the best exercise for a muscle, is to combine two good exercises. So in other words, if you found a movement that seemed to be the best in the world, let's say you could rank them in the top five, which you really can't, or hypertrophy for a muscle, if you were to combine exercise two and three together for your total sets versus doing the same amount of volume with just the, the best exercise, you would still probably get slightly more muscle growth. Right? Variation matters. And it matters because different parts of a muscle I get used a little differently. And I don't always mean the upper or lower part of your chest or whatever. I'm talking different fibers throughout it. They play a larger role at different angles and at different joint angles, right? So it matters. So when we look at a lot of big barbell movements, they are very good for stimulating a lot of muscles through the body, right? We stimulate a lot of muscles and sometimes even extra isometric work. And they allow us to use big weights. Generally speaking, you are not going to use as much weight with dumbbells as you will with a barbell. And anyone who says they can, you need to go take a real close look at their form. Because I've known at least one person who claims that, you know, like with, with benching. And it turns out they don't know how to bench press, first of all. That matters. Number two, they're short stroking their dumbbells. So that, that's why they're doing partials with the dumbbells. And they don't know how to bench on top of it. But generally speaking, we get more total tension. We get a lot more tension. Some of that's because we don't have to stabilize as much. When we use a barbell, we can keep the loading even on both sides better because we're locked in place. Like the whole thing that dumbbells work the, the sides more evenly with each other, the left or right, is actually not true. Uh, it, it's based on a, almost no knowledge of lifting. Like someone who understands lifting couldn't come to that conclusion because this can happen. But with a barbell, we're locked in, right? We're locked in. If we shift to one side, the other side has to shift. Dumbbells, they can do it independently. So we're locked in tight. Less stabilizers used. And we get a lot of tension on these primary movers, but it's even tension. Uh, and sometimes we're limited in range of motion. And a lot of times what happens with a barbell, because it they can't move around, when we are stuck in that position, because I mean, it's going to be different. If your grip changes or the angle changes, the muscle that fails first is going to be the weakest one. And usually that's going to be the one that gets the most stimulus. So let's say your front delts, your interior deltoids for you are weaker than your pectorals, your lower pecs, middle pecs on the bench press. Well, when you get close to failure, it's going to be that muscle failing. In other words, you get one rep in reserve and you rack it, you probably reached failure with, a, say, your front delts if they're weaker. So they're going to get a slightly larger training response. Now, that's good because they'll get caught up quicker. But the other muscles involved may not get as many effective reps off of the lift. They might get, say, one less. They're still growing. They're still getting a training response. What happens when we go over to the dumbbells then? Well, first of all, we can get different angles. Well, that matters a lot, right? Because we're stuck like this with the barbell. The dumbbell we can turn in. We a lot of times get a better contraction at the top with something like that because, again, we get a better stretch at the bottom. So we can get a myostatic reflex better. We, if we can get deeper, what happens? We get a little more mechanical tension at the weakest point. 
for that muscle, well, that has some growth potential. Now we're getting a stretch reflex. Sometimes we can contract harder at the top because we come in more. So we get that lockout, like with a closed grip bench, actually works the chest differently. It works the lockout of your chest better than a, fl than a flat bench does. That's one of the reasons a closed grip helps the lockout. It's not just because of the triceps. It's the, the chest activation at the top, too. Helps your bench lockout. Well, dumbbell achieves a similar response. The other benefit, as it gets harder, let's say we're in this position, right? And it gets harder. We might turn our hands in as it gets more difficult, or we might flare more. Yeah, because we have the ability to do that. And why do we do that? As we get more fatigue, the muscles that are getting fatigued the most, we're going to compensate and try to use them less. And we're going to try to use the stronger muscles more. So now what happens, or the stronger part of the muscles, because it might be lower versus a little bit of middle chest, you know, where we're working the chest a little bit. It's going to be more even because as we go with the dumbbells, we get closer to failure. Our form and angles is going to change. It's going to allow us to fatigue more parts of the muscle and the muscle better. So when you start looking at this and you combine these two together, we have the potential for a lot more muscle activation because the bigger barbell movement is going to let us move a lot of weight. We're actually going to get a lot of other stabilizers involved because of that isometric stuff, which again, it only has a very, very minor thing. But again, we got a lot of direct tension and a big movement. The dumbbells, it lets us finish it all off. So it's a phenomenal combination. And that's just one example. We could, we could think of the same thing with a row, right? We could do a barbell row, whether it's a penley row, standing row, chest supported row, we could do a barbell row. We can get a big, heavy movement. Let's just move a lot of weight, get some extra grip training, work our entire back. We can follow it up with a dumbbell row. Think about everything we just said with the bench press. And that apply to a row. As our, let's say we have really strong lats. If we have really strong lats, they're going to dominate a little more with the barbell. But when we go to the dumbbell, what's going to tend to happen is that as we fatigue, we're going to change our grip. So it might, again, allow us to use the stronger muscles more so that what ends up getting a larger growth response of the big barbell movement will be the weakest link. Maybe it's your mid-trap. Maybe your rhomboids are failing you. And so therefore you're losing one effective rep for the lats. And then with the dumbbells you end up turning your hands in more as you go. As those other upper back muscles start to fatigue, our grip will change for the last couple of reps. Finish the lats off. And we could, we could apply the same thing to, to other movements. We could do overhead pressing. We could discuss this for curls, tricep extensions. Uh, we could even get into lower body stuff, although that's going to be to a lesser extent. But it gives us some variation. All right, it gives us some variation. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.